Hey guys, it's Javad. It's, uh, I always say this, but it's been a little while, and uh, it always is. It's always like about once a month I make one of these videos, and it's usually correlated to me starting a new project. Um, but yeah, I just uh, finished up the Debacles project a few weeks ago. Hopefully you got to check that out and saw all my posts about that. If you haven't, uh, search DB... A C L E S debacles on the project pad, and uh, you'll see the full build with all the details, like I always do. Uh, those turned out awesome. I might do another little vlog about those and and uh, how they sound. Um, but uh, you know, I, I I feel like I met my goals with those as far as building a uh, audio file quality PA speaker. They get incredibly loud, but they have uh, a good tonal balance. They will play uh, music beautifully in my listening room, as well as out in the park or at uh, an event at 034 Motorsport for you know hundreds and hundreds of people. They have great, great bass output. They never sound strained. Um, I think the only strain that um, does come through at maximum full volume is probably amplifier distortion, which gets above 10% at those levels and you know you start to hear um, the uh, the second and third order harmonics and those you know the change of tonality um, at that peak level but I mean we're talking 120 plus decibels on one meter so anything anything reasonably sane uh, they sound awesome um, and uh, you know I've just been getting into some other stuff this is some really cool walnut I found that I'll be using for an upcoming project. You can see it's figured. This is a black Claro walnut from California. And I have, I have more of this. This isn't all of it. But there's some really, really cool grain and some crotch action over here. Same with this one. You can see the figuring, some cool knots. Really beautiful. This is about five quarter, uh, so it's about an inch and a quarter thick. And I have some, uh, I guess, eight quarter, which is about two inches thick that I'll resaw into, you know, three quarter inch pieces and uh, using an upcoming project. So uh, what I want to talk about today, I don't have a fancy name for this project, unfortunately. It's a dual opposed SB Acoustics 10 inch subwoofer. These are the parts over here. And uh, this, this project is for a, a local friend and he wants uh, some, some subwoofer reinforcement in another spot in the room. So he's doing kind of like a swarm to even out the, uh, the, the room acoustics. And so he wanted something that, that would add really nice low bass. Um, be very clean and good sounding, uh, but it didn't have to put out like tons of bass, not for a home theater or anything. So um, I talked to him about using these uh, two SB29 SWNRX subwoofers. Uh, I'm not by any means the first one to use these. These are very well received and popular. They were used in a lot of builds. Um, Really awesome subwoofers, and uh, they sound amazing. And these these model well in about three cubic feet sealed. And uh, I'll be using a mini DSP amp with built-in DSP, um, so we can do room correction and adjust the frequency response. So let me just uh, open some of this stuff up and uh, show you guys the fun stuff. So let's see. So this is, this is actually, this is, this is more like an 11 inch, actually, hold on. Well, the frame diameter is 11 and a half inches, but if I measure the cone uh, from 
you know, the middle of the surround to the middle of the surround, it's about eight and a quarter. So I guess it's it's actually a it's it's probably comparable to most ten inch woofers, but the frame is really a lot bigger. So it looks looks big. It has a nice big flange for mounting. Um, really nice quality cast aluminum frame. Uh, beautiful fit and finish. This is a paper cone. Um, huge vent that goes. There's a screen in there, but you can just see the the back of the dust cap or uh, inside up into the voice coil. And um, these are six ohms. Um, and these these will these will model flat to about uh, thirty to thirty five hertz in the sealed enclosure. And they have plenty of excursion uh, to add some DSP to that and uh, get them flat to 20. There'll be no problem with that. Um, these, these have great excursion, so they'll, they'll get plenty loud. And honestly, two of these in this configuration would, would be as much bass as anyone ever actually needs up to some pretty loud volume levels. But depends what you're trying to do. For home theater, uh, it's a whole other story. And if you want to go below 20 hertz, also a whole other story. So the, what I'm gonna be doing with these is dual opposed. So that means one will go on this side and one will, will be facing this way and um, their magnets will basically be together. And I'll, I'll create some sort of, there's like a nice little lip here, maybe something to attach the two frames together so all that force transfers. But what happens is when you, when you set up the woofers like this, one cone's going like this and one's like this. So, so the forces cancel out, and if I, if I hit my two fists together, all the forces cancel and both my hands stop. And so that's what happens in a dual pose configuration. The result is a lot less uh, uh, cabinet vibrations, almost none. You could turn this thing up all the way, put a glass of water on it, and you'll hardly see any ripples in the water. Um, the other awesome thing is the subwoofer since there's no forces in any direction, since they're all being canceled, um, the, the subwoofer is not gonna like wanna walk or move around the room or anything like that, which is really common when you have just one subwoofer, uh, or if you have a subwoofer with two subwoofers on one side, both those cones are shaking back and forth and you'll see your enclosure start walking across the room. Uh, that's a pretty common thing. So this dual post configuration will really benefit um, sonically and also make this a really just a stable uh, subwoofer to have in, in the room all right I want to show you guys the amp so this is the mini DSP this is the 250 watt by two so I'll be giving 250 watts to each of these subwoofers this doesn't look like a lot, but there's actually a lot going on in here. So this is all you see is this panel. Um, it does have uh, balanced inputs and outputs. Analog, it also has a digital input and uh, RCA inputs, which is what I'll be using. There's a volume knob here, power switch. You can actually switch between 110 and 220 volts. And then um, there's a RJ45 connector here, which is what you use to connect to the amp. Unfortunately, it doesn't have like a USB connector like most things. Um, but what you do is you connect this to the Ethernet port on your computer, and then you can communicate it, uh, communicate with it that way. The other cool thing is if you're running multiples of these, you can connect these to your router and they go on the Wi-Fi network, and then you can access multiples at the same time which is great if you have um, you know, stereo speakers or if you have a, a fully active project with like a couple of these in each speaker, um, that allows you to do that. Um, this is a class D amp and uh, it looks like Mini DSP is doing this in partnership with, uh, with Ice Power, which is the, the company that um, Bang & Olufsen used to, to own and uh, split off. Uh, but these ice power modules are really popular, really good quality amplification. And 250 watts per sub, um, I believe that's a forum rating, but that'll be plenty to get these things well over, you know, 105, 110 decibels um, and deliver the power at the lower frequencies that we want. 
Uh, comes with a couple cables and a few accessories, but uh, you know, it's pretty standard. But I've been wanting to play with one of these amps for a while, so I'm looking forward to that. And I want to show you this cool veneer I got. So this is, uh, I didn't want to unravel it yet, but this is a really beautifully figured um, maple veneer. So what I'll be doing is, let's see the, the figuring at all. Yeah, you can see it there. It's really pretty veneer and you'll get a better look at it. Um, but I'll be veneering the sides of the enclosure with this. And um, to make my life easier, I got the PSA uh, pressure sensitive adhesive option. So I don't have to mess with any glues or adhesives. And uh, the enclosure construction on this will be Baltic birch. And I will miter the corners and then veneer the body. And I'm excited about this. The top is actually some really cool wood supplied by my friend. This is some bird's eye maple. So he supplied this to me unplaned. So sort of like this. That's more of it right here. So it doesn't look like much there, right? But once I ran it through the planer, boom, all this beautiful bird's eye figure came out. These three are all from the same board. And I'll only really need two of them. And, you know, this is a little cupped, so I gotta, I gotta deal with that. But um, I'll likely do something where I'll, I'll cut and glue these so that the center bird's eye heart portions of the wood match up and then they fade to this lighter on the outside. Um, and he wants to use this as sort of like a little end table as well. So that'll, that'll work well for that. Um, but yeah, really beautiful wood. I'm excited about that. So anyways, this is the dual opposed SB subwoofer project. Um, again, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to come up with a name because it's just a subwoofer. It's nothing special as far as uh, the design goes. It's two 10-inch subwoofers in a sealed box with an amp. Um, I'm not doing anything groundbreaking here, but uh, I'll do some cool stuff with the enclosure like always and, and make it look cool and beautiful. And it'll also sound amazing too. So that's always the goal. Thanks for following guys. Appreciate it.